Previously on Maximus Academy. The blue corner. Yeah! The audition fights unveiled the final eight. On arrival at the Maximus gym, the teams tackled training before the Blues claimed first blood in the challenge. And then, with a little help from Danny Green, took out team fight one. It's the morning after the first team fight. An unlikely pair, Harrison and Steve, are dissecting last night's performances. Kenny looked mean against Mark, eh? No, he did. He gave it a good. He gave it a good run. But Mark just kept coming at him, coming yeah. at him, coming at him. How would you boys feel after that? Yeah, I was real proud of him, man. I mean, at the end he of the day, well. at the end of the day, as much as it is a competition, we want to win it. Like I was, I was so proud of Eddie. Yeah, the competition's um, getting tougher. Um, I feel that things are starting to get more competitive now, although everybody still gets along. There's still that bit of competitive edge. Everyone's realising how close we are getting to the crunch and everyone's here to, here to be Maximus champion. So, yeah, definitely it's ramping up. So what does this mean now if we've got another challenge coming up? It means now, mate, we need to get some points on the board. I don't know me and my boys have spoken about it. Like, if we don't get points on the board in, in our eyes, we're done. Obviously now we're getting more into the uh, into the competition zone and the, the, the competition's heating up. We're now just trying to lift our intensity, just try, try, try and sharpen our minds, just th be thinking ahead. They're a little bit quicker than our opposition, and just creating doubt all the time with our movements. Try and let the hands play a bit more, Lockie. Just let your hands play a bit more. Training this morning with Johnny it was great. Where I'm learning most, and I guess as a team, what he's trying to push is to keep the work rate up, get our fitness. He reckons the, the best thing for novice boxers is to, you know, if the fitter team generally will win. You can just see it in their, the angles that they're making are much better. They're shortening their punches when they've got to be shortened and they're, they're jamming so much better, the whole lot of them. Come in with that first right hand, bang, bang, come right in with it, mate. Yeah, don't wind it up, just see me, just there. Bang, bang. Yeah, Harrison, get that angle right, mate. That left's going into his nuts. So I think they were able to take a lot out of the fight last night that they all experienced, and I think it's made them um, understand it a bit more what it's all about. They've gotten to the nitty gritty of it. As the boxers from both teams push hard to improve their skills, they're paid a surprise visit from seasoned veteran Garth Wood, and with him, invaluable boxing experience, both from inside the ring and from the sport itself. Watching this morning, I've seen that um, they're very competitive. Well, not every one of them wants to win. There's some good power, there's some good head movement, and I was watching some of the boys on the heavy bag, uh, some big right hands. There's a lot of talent here. Gee, you're looking straight in the headlights. But what you're trying to do is fake, dummy, straight at a different angle, and blind shot it. Uh, it was unbelievable, man, having a guy like Gar. He gave me a lot of tips, you know, rolling my shoulder, going to the blind spot, you know, throwing some combinations, quick body to the head. Stuff like that. He's, he's, he's a great technical fighter. What, what's your heritage? What nationality Mexican. Mexican? Good, good heritage for this game. So that, that's what you want to do, more or less. And while seven boxers push themselves to breaking point, one decides to take it easy. For he has sustained an injury that he is strategically concealing from the others. Yeah, so yes, that was a good win. Um, like I, I, one thing out of it that I pulled up a bit tight, like in the lower ribs. Um, I think I noticed that midway through the second round when I was full rip, it sort of crunched and pinched, and um, yeah, it's just real tight. So I come up a bit sore in my ribs after my fight yesterday. I, I felt it actually pinch. I think I threw like a left rib in the second round. You've had a great win. Yeah. So you got time to rest. You're very fit. I've been sort of keeping it to myself uh, from the other guys. Um, just in case I come up against any of them later on in the competition, I don't want to have a big red target on it. Just got to get that injury fixed. So we'll get someone to look at it and just work on your recovery. Maybe it's a bit, a bit of a muscle strain um, and maybe I can get come back from it, but um, I think if it's cracked, I, I don't know where to go from there. 
All right, boys, firstly, I want to applaud all ears for the efforts that you put in this morning. Uh, I saw a ton of passion and will, and um, whoever comes away the winner in this tournament, that's exactly what they need. Talent can only get you so far, it's how much you want it. Yeah, it was really exciting to see Garth come in. Um, Garth just like taught us it's it's like you can be fit you can, you can be a technical fighter but it's in the mind it's the want yeah just how much you want it and how much heart you got for it i believe mentoring is a big part of this game which is the loneliest sport in the world then i had success fighting monday in the middle way so it was a glamorous division in australia so i stuck around risk and reward even though it was hard bigger payday bigger fighters I fought three world champions, Sam Solomon, Mundine and Gill. What did it feel like to get the, uh, the knockout on Mundine? <laughs> yeah, all my Christmases come at once. <laughs> and if you've got the right people in your corner patting you on the back and telling you where you're going wrong, um, the world's your oyster. Like I said to you before, mate, play the bluff game. You've got to bullshit to yourself. Even if you're buggered, your fitness is down, you're playing cards, you're playing poker. Strut around that that ring like I'm all right, I'm all good, I'm all good, until you get your breath again, and then boom. Uh, having Garth come in today was a, a pretty pretty cool experience. Talking about uh, not just I guess competing on a professional level, but getting through the mental barriers uh, once you're up on that stage was uh, yeah pretty relative. Like the way I move and that sort of feels muscular, um, but like the local pain like sort of indicates maybe there could be a crack there. So um, I don't know, it's getting me a little bit nervous. It could uh, effectively be the end of the competition for me, but fingers crossed, um, hopefully uh, we can come back with some positive results. Following his x-rays, Mark will have a tense few hours before he receives his results. Time that will no doubt be spent wondering if this is in fact the end of the road. In the spirit of maintaining a level playing field, the red and blue teams converge in Manly to compete in a challenge that will require them to think fast, learn new skills and push themselves to the limit. Hey guys, welcome to Manly Yacht Club, the site of challenge number two. Now I'm not too sure how many of you have dragon boated before, but you're about to be learning pretty quick. I couldn't believe we're dragon boat racing, like I'm not a water guy. Um, I think I've been in a boat probably about six times and they've all had motors on the back of them. As you know, the stakes in the competition are getting higher. This challenge is worth 30 points and the winning team has control over who fights next. All right, guys, good luck. Paddle hard. The red team not winning this challenge basically means we're out of the game in our eyes. I mean, we, we haven't got any points on the board and we really need to go in there and give it our all. In our eyes, this is, uh, this is make or break, do or die. Just remember, Paddles all the way, not none of these little flicky no. bullshit. There's going to be a lot of desperation going into this challenge today, and we, we can't afford to let the blue team come up with another win. It's just going to put us too far behind. The rules of the Dragon Boat Challenge are simple. To row the 250 kilogram boat, usually paddled by a team of 20, over a 200 metre course, the first team over the line wins. This is our last challenge. If we lose this, we may as well not even be here. Boats are in line. On your marks. Get set. Yeah, I got the inside. Yeah, I got the inside. Yeah. <laughs>
stay tonight. That is team effort, boys. Ooh. That is best. And so, from desperation stakes, Red prevailed, clawing their way back into the competition and getting some vital points on the board. Now trailing blue by only 10 points, they have the advantage of choosing the next team fight matchup. Getting the win today was unbelievable. It was the best feeling yet. Oh, the result today was, uh, was disappointing. It just means that we can pick the fight next. The red team got the better out of it, but um, we fought hard and we were proud of it. Now, red team got a bit of power going into this fight, so hopefully we can capitalise on it and get some more points. It did put a bit of a downer on our team, but, um, but still, if we just go out and win all our fights, we beat the red team, it's as simple as that. Now we've got a taste of victory, we know what it's like, so we've got to just keep up the, the persistence and, and, and start knocking them down. Congratulations to the Red team, but um, now we're, maybe we're looking to get the points back in the ring. With the challenge won and an increasing point system, the Red team now face a decision that could hold their competition future in the balance. Let, let's think how it pans out. I mean, we pick this one, then what are the next two going to be after that, you know? We're going to think strategically, that's what I've been thinking. Let's say we send a really good fighter into the next fight and wins yeah. to one of their bad fighters, that then we, then we don't have... We don't have that good fighter. ...firepower for when we get more points. Remember they said that we get more points? Yeah. For us, we're thinking, of, we're thinking about tactics a little more now. We're realising that the points, you're getting more points for the same challenges and the same fights as you were in the, in the get-go. So now that we've thought about that, we're kind of changing our tactics as to who we put up against next. If we look at it, like... Like Harrison said, we could easily knock off one of their easy ones and get you know 40 get points point. and be, be in front, yeah. but then we're on the yeah. risk of the next one. Imagine yeah. if we lose it, they pick their best fighter to fight our worst, they're going to smack us with the points. Strategy-wise, at the moment, we might be um, opting to make more bigger points and more points later with easier fights. Fights might not be really the matchups that we want at the moment, but to win and keep the team in the competition, that's what we'll be doing. I reckon, I reckon that's our, be our best bet. What do you reckon yeah, on that, boys? Sure. You boys can do that. that. It has to be a team, team vote. Yeah, you you sweat. Yeah. Oh, With points for each fight increasing, both teams are getting fiercely strategic in who they put in the ring, and any opportunity to get one up on the opposition is seized. It's okay, what's the big surprise for today, huh? Don't know. Yeah. Oh, you don't want me to know, mate. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Exactly. We got the power. Right. We're gonna make you sweat. You got the power. That's what you think, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you feel the power once I got the ring. I got the power, and, and we got the power. As is very, very confident. Nah. About eighty percent of the games are mind game, so just trying to exhaust him a bit, whether he gets in the ring or not. I know from our, our day the other day, um, it's just so exhausting, no, not knowing if you're going to fight or not. So I just wanted to get a bit of payback on him. I'd be ready. I'm we ready, might, mate. might I'm be ready, a big mate. surprise. I'm ready too, no, mate. You don't look ready. Look, you're half asleep. <laughs> you're going to be ready. Look at you. You're sleeping. As, as, I, as I said before, I was ready yesterday. I'm ready today. Yeah, trying to put his flames out a little bit. Uh, he's uh, very, very confident. I'm ready. I'm confident. I got the power. Everything he says is from his heart. Don't you worry, mate. I'll do you and I'll do the producers after that. <laughs> What about you, Abby? You in for a big day? Or you just Mate, I'm always in for a big day. day. <laughs> I'm always in for a big day there, buddy. You don't mind sitting back looking good, but... We're just taking this challenge, boys, as it comes. Yeah, um, good. And just, just like I said prior to the race yesterday, that the water was our niche. There's no f***ing water in the ring, man. Let me tell you something. Be our time today, Max. Might be our time today, buddy. All right, you call it a big day. I call it just another day in the office, man. Oh, we'll see you later. Yeah. You'll feel like forever, yes, ask Harrison, mate. Ask Harrison about Ooh. it. <laughs> it didn't feel that long to me, mate. I'll just stay quiet, let my hands do the talking. So how about staying quiet then? <laughs> <laughs> Despite the laughs, one member of the blue team is nervously awaiting results that could mean the end of the road for his Maximus hopes. We actually went ahead and did an x-ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you'd be pleased it doesn't show a, uh, a cracked rib, oh, that's, that's which is good, good news. That's, uh, that's brilliant news. The doctor come over and um, told me that my rib isn't cracked. It's great news. Oh, I'm stoked You'll be to hear back that. in the ring, and I wish you all the best oh, of luck. Awesome. Mate. Thank you very much. My pleasure.
yeah, extremely happy about the news. Um, so hopefully I can sort of just ease back into it and um, hopefully I'm fighting again in no time. Yeah, we had a chat about it earlier and spoke. Meanwhile, the red team have to explain to Johnny their decision to use their precious fight choice advantage to match novice Pete against powerhouse Lachlan. Very different to the way I would have gone, but um, I'm quite willing to go with your judgment. I was going to go the other way, but the boys had got together and they came up with a good enough reason why to go with Peter. And uh, maybe we'll still be 1-1 at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. He feels that Lockie's the, the kingpin. When a kid's got that confidence and that, um, that planted in his head, well, we'd be a fool to interrupt with that. I, I think we've made the right move. There's just one thing, mate. Where do you live, Pete? Penrith. It's a long walk home in yeah. Pete. <laughs> All right, guys, you know the duel by now. Tables have turned. Red team, who have you chosen from your side to fight next? For the red team, we've chosen me to fight. Petey. Love Woo! Yes. And Pete, who have you chosen from the blue side? From the blue side, we've chosen Lockie. <laughs> 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 All right, Pete and Lockie, the winner of this fight will earn 30 points for their side. And as you know, you have one hour to prep for your fight. Best of luck, off you go. A very interesting matchup. Uh, big Pete is obviously the biggest and strongest in their side. Fighting Lockie is arguably our strongest guy. Good jab. Double. I'm super competitive. Um, I, I do not enjoy losing. Some may say I'm too competitive at times. It's, it's like going to war, you're out there by yourself. It's, it's you and the other bloke. So you really got to prove what you've got um, and hopefully it's, it's your day. The thing that drives me is I, I want to do this for my wife, Amy. I want to do this for my son, Hudson. I want to do this for every, every little chubby kid at school that got told they couldn't, you know, they couldn't do stuff or any, any little chubby kid at school that was thought to themselves, no, nah, I won't give that a go. Boom, boom. Well, yeah, we look at Peter when he walked in the door, we thought he was going to trip over his belly button, he was that fat. And uh, you look at him today, it just shows that a lot of hard work and discipline in that short period of time. He, He's looking a treat. He should be very proud of himself. And with that and his confidence, we might just uh, wipe that smile off Pitsy's face today. Box! Keep your right hand up. In and out, speed. Good, feel it. Jabs, roll in. That's it. Hands up. Underneath, Peter. Underneath. Underneath, Pete. Good boy. Go, Pete. Go, Pete. Go. Jab, Pete. Jab. Right hand up, Lockie. Jab, Pete. Hands up, Lockie. First round come out and as Johnny was saying, I'm trying to make him miss punches and I was getting some good punches back on him and he, he was missing some punches. Mate, he's dropping his hands, the punches are there. You can get him, mate. You can get him. You're doing everything right except you're dropping your hands. Yeah. Keep your hands up. Petey's a big boy, so I knew there's gonna be some plenty of heavy hits in there and he got to capitalise on those chances when I dropped my hands. That's a, a big thing that I've got to keep working on.
He's absolutely mate, but you're not going up enough, mate. You've got to back yourself. Come on. As soon as the, the second round bell went, I knew I, I was unfit. Still, I think with a lot of heart, I, I, I kept coming forward and, and, and throwing punches. Pete, you've got two minutes built for Hudson, OK? Yeah. Hey. He's going to be desperate, so hands up. Jab, jab, and a big right up, right up. Right up. Right up. As each second ticks down to the final bell, and with precious points still up for grabs, each boxer must find something extra special within himself if he is to have his hand raised at the end. the victory. The winner of Team Fight 2 is the Blue Corner. Yeah, pretty pretty bashed up, pretty bruised. Uh, the ego's a bit bruised, but we knew he was a better fighter um, under experience. Knew he was fitter, it showed out there. But that's uh, one of the best gone from the Blue team now, so that's more points to us in the long run. I literally took a couple for the team. <laughs> Yeah, feeling good. Could, could have the win under the belt. Look, I went in there ready for some big shots from Petey. Obviously, he's a big boy and he's gone through a lot, so I knew he was going to be determined, but he just went out there and tried to outbox him. So at the end of the day, the blue team have a commanding 40-point advantage, leaving the red team hoping their strategy to fight Lachlan will pay dividends further down the track. For your chance to win your own Maximus Academy fight experience, go to the Facebook page for more details. That's facebook.com forward slash Maximus Australia. Next time on Maximus Academy, Nigel Benn imparts some tough boxing lessons. The challenge brings a competitive spirit to the boil, and Fight 3 goes down to the wire.